I thought I'd, I would probably um, post a, uh, here's the car right at me. All right, so I'm back. Thought I would, uh, I'd post a little rambling blog as I drive because it's just me. You know, I don't have I don't have anybody riding shotgun with me, so just me rambling on, talking about nothing, wasting time as I drive through the, the national forest here. Thought I'd upload this. Look, like, you know, I understand. Not everybody, you know, gets to see um, a national forest from a, um, a road, you know, and. kind of interesting. A lot of people live in cities. They never get to see trees or you know, adventures of running over the rumbling strip there. Going through the mountain pass right now. So the road undulates up and down, up and down, up and down. But this is the National Forest and as cool as it is. So I was thinking about uh, what is it like to be a YouTube uh, creator, to make videos for YouTube. What is my passion? Why do I do it? I'm gonna go through a tunnel. Apparently you have to be under 14 feet tall to go in this tunnel. Uh, this is cool, huh? But you don't get to see this every day. <coughs> but. All right, so what is my passion? Well, besides uh, wanting to make sure that the, the truth gets out there and is reported correctly, I have a, my passion is giving a voice to those who don't necessarily always get a voice. When it comes to mainstream media, they, they tend to sensationalize, skim over um, the coverage. All right, we're gonna have a car coming right at us here in a bit, so cover your eyes, it's gonna get bright. Sorry about that. that. That's what happens. Um, they they skim over, you know, and they only cover like the highlights because that, you have to understand they're trying to uh, sell, you know, newspapers and you know advertising space, and they need people to tune in, you know, and uh, watch and listen to uh, what they have to say. And a lot of times they miss the you know the smaller points. You know, uh, let's just take for example a murder case. You know, um, or the case of the gentleman in uh, um, at Mall of America who threw that five-year-old off of the third story. Um, uh, well, he pushed him off of the third floor uh, of Mall of America. Now, I don't know if you've ever been to Mall of America, but the place is freaking huge, you know, and why did he do it? I mean, he, he mentioned to the police he was looking for someone, you know, to kill. He was uh, scorned, but still, it, uh, there's more behind that. There's a, you know, he, mentally, what drives someone to the point where they say, you know what, I'm going to throw that kid or push that kid off of uh, the, you know, the third floor and hope he dies. And you know, when, it, when it comes to victims of crimes, you know, in their families, you know, they may they may interview, you know, mom or dad or you know, show a people, you know, mourning, but they don't they don't give a voice to the. The victims tell everybody the story behind it all. What was the victim like? What was their dreams? 
their passion? What did they want to do with their lives? What did they do for their lives? Did, you know, were they, you know, a self-serving, you know, um, individual? Or did uh, they, you know, enjoy uh, giving back to society? Did they have a, a talent? You know, I, I was reading a story about um, a gentleman, you know, who uh, um, was homeless. And he was just another homeless, you know, man who died and they they put like three little sentences in uh, the newspaper about him in uh, Sacramento. Well, it turns out this guy went to uh, Juilliard. He was a concert um, pianist. He, at one point in his life, before he became addicted to uh, methamphetamines and, and heroin, he was one of those individuals that people, if you ever heard him play, you would you would stop and you'd be in awe. But what did we get in the paper? Homeless man found dead on sidewalk drug overdose. That's all we got in the paper. You know, and. Unfortunately, it, it took two weeks before his family could even claim his body because they didn't know that he had even died. And he's missed by a lot of people. We have to have compassion for, you know, even those who don't have a voice. Yeah, he made bad decisions in his life, but he, you know, I don't, I don't think he, he went out there and purposely said, you know what, I want to become a, you know, a drug addict. And like a lot of people out there, one thing led to another and led him down that path and nothing nudged him off that course. From what I understand, he, uh, be he became addicted originally to opioids, opioids. Um, after he uh, was, he required uh, surgery on his arm, and he and he wasn't able to play the the piano anymore. You know, while he was recovering, and he became addicted to those to the pills. And when he couldn't afford the pills, and the doctors cut him off from from the opioids, that led him to uh, use you know heroin. And the heroin, uh, you know, when he couldn't get that, you know, it was meth. Because he was trying to self-medicate to get away from the pain. Again, he was voiceless. Nobody, nobody, you know, um, wrote, you know, an entire page article about him. But he was somebody. He was someone's son. He was someone's brother. And you know, in his exact case, so you know, he had he came from a very large uh, um, family. He had six uh, siblings. It didn't mention that in the paper. But I I researched uh, you know and looked him up to you know to find out what his story was, to find out just what who was he, how did he come to the point where he you know he ended up on the streets you know and homeless. And a drug addict. That's my passion. To tell the story that nobody else will will tell. To make sure that, that you know that I give these people a voice. I, I can't get to everybody. You know and in a lot of ways, you know, I'm, I'm restricted by the mainstream media, too. I mean, uh, if, they, if they're not going to cover the story, they're not going to do research on him. It makes it more difficult for me. And it just happened to be, and how I found out about this guy and how he came to my attention, was a good friend of mine who went to Juilliard. She's a um, violinist. 
and she didn't know him personally but she had played in a couple of orchestras with him where he was uh, a member of it now these are very large orchestras so she didn't know him personally she knew who he was she knew what you know that he was a pianist and when she saw that he he had passed <coughs> excuse me she said hey you gotta, you gotta check into this and do a story on, on this guy so uh, I researched it looked up at you know his bio he doesn't even have a Wikipedia page or no I I am DB page he's just another voiceless homeless man who died of a drug overdose and the county was thinking about you know it was day, days away from uh, being cremated and uh, being put into a pauper's grave. And luckily, the right people just happened to see, you know, the blurb in the, um, the paper. So that's my that's my passion. Why do I make YouTube and put up with all the all the you know the hate? I, I mainly because I you know I want to I want to do these stories and I know I know that the hate is gonna come I know people are not gonna gonna like what I have to say and at the same time I know that the you know the haters are going they want me to go away they want me to be silenced they want to be the only voice that is out there on a story you know, maybe you know in some cases they want to be the only voice on Christopher Watts and they want to push their um, agenda their narrative Wow I, w I wish I was uh, sorry but I wish you could see this because half of the, half of them up the up these um, mountains here they you know, well, the mountain sides because I'm, you know, I'm up in the, the mountains. If you see that one that's up, that was up uh, to a little bit to the left, that's uh, the snow caps because I am up almost to the top of the mountain in the pass here. But you know, it's not uh, Christopher, you know, in Watch case, that's just an example. And I'm going to have a couple cars coming at me here in a little bit. So, you know. Um, probably a couple more around a couple more bends. I can see the lights up ahead. They're on your left right now and, um, It's not just the Christopher Watts case. I've been contacted by you know people who wanted me to um, Take down videos, you know that I've done you know and coverage that I've done on uh, other other cases because that these people at you know, first they tried to tell me that I was wrong you know and that my research and everything was flawed but I there's a car I'm sorry about that uh, or semi it looks like they uh they wanted me to take down the videos because they wanted to be the only narrative on uh, you on YouTube or anywhere else. But uh, and I knew that my information was correct because I got it directly from the uh, mother, the father, and from uh, the uh, family members in one case, and in another case, you know, um, the the Jamie Kloss case. Um, I was contacted uh, uh, what three or four times by someone who tried to tell me that uh, there was no possible way that I was right and that every you know bit of uh, information that I, I you know I put in videos was um, wrong. But I knew that I was right because I have family who um, 
were good friends with uh, Jamie's dad. And uh, I didn't, I don't think I gave any information in that, in that case that that was wrong. I mean, if, if, um, if I, somebody can prove me wrong, I, I'll be more than happy to, you know, make a correction. Put out a, kind of hard to see here. So you guys get forward light. Snowbank over there on the left. Roads are a little slick up here. That's nice. There's just no snow on the road, but the roads are wet and they're kind of slippery, especially going around those those curves back there. I'm almost to the top of, of the pass. Now eh? anybody ever get to see this before? I know it's an early morning. Uh, it's 5.30 a.m. now. It's pretty cool. Windy, twisty, two-lane highway going through the mountain passes. But basically, in a nutshell, that I know I'm rambling on, but that's uh, why I do what I do. And I, you know, I'll address something else that uh, a lot of people have asked me about. They're like, you know, why would I want to support your channel? You know, and why is it that you 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 care so little about your subscribers? That's not true at all. I care about my subscribers, you know, a lot. And I've uh, I've helped uh, a, quite a few um, of my subscribers have been dealing with issues in their lives, help them get connected with resources and uh, help them uh, um, through troubled times. I care about my subscribers, but, but when I say I don't I would make these videos regardless if anybody ever watched them or subscribed, I mean that I would I would make these videos and I would cover these stories regardless if anybody ever watched yeah it doesn't mean that I don't I don't care if I have subscribers sure you know I want a billion subscribers but here's another car sorry and another one another car oh, oh semi You know, I, I would, I want a billion subscribers. I do. And that's not, that's the absolute truth. I want, I want this YouTube to pay for itself financially, cover its own costs. Right now, it's, uh, it's barely covering its costs from what I'm getting on uh, YouTube and ad, ad revenue, along with uh, I have to take money from what I get on Patreon. I would much rather be, you know, have everybody who, um, you know, gives me uh, super chats. I'd rather them all just be a Patreon supporter. You could be a Patreon supporter for a dollar a month, two dollars, five dollars a month. You know, but I've got Patreon supporters from, you know, from a dollar all the way up to, uh, you know, I think the largest uh, Patreon supporter gives me uh, thirteen dollars a month. But I'd rather people be, you know, um, support me. But it, it, I know, I understand that a recurring uh, um, payment system like that, like Patreon, doesn't work for everybody. Oh. Yeah, so, yeah, well, that's uh, that over here on the left, all that white stuff, that is snow. And lots of it. Those snow banks are probably about 15 feet high in some places there. Jesus. A lot of snow. Lots and lots of snow. Very wet up here. Passing a ski lodge right now. Over on my left. The people. It's five o'clock in the freaking morning. The people out there skiing. What the hell are they doing? They... Oh well. 
I don't know, maybe it's uh, ski patrol. But obviously the ski lodge is open. Well. I'm, I'm terrible at self-promoting. I've never asked anybody to subscribe or click that bell icon, turn on their notifications, make sure that they, you know, that they've got it all set up so they can see every one of my videos. I've never asked anybody to send me money. And I'm not out there selling uh, snake oil or blue jeans. Sure, I have a fan fan store. Now, the fan store, the only reason why I even have the fan store is because subscribers and fans of my of my channel ask for it. I mean, I, I, didn't, I didn't go out and say, you know what, I'm going to start a fan store so I can make more money. I, I, here's another car. I started uh, the fan store, you know, and the, the fan store is actually on Teespring. I've had that uh, store since uh, my wife was going through uh, chemotherapy. For her can for breast cancer, and it was a way for us to the um, raise funds to pay for chemotherapy. Now I don't know if you've ever been through chemotherapy or any kind of cancer treatment, but you know, insurance companies they, they love to you know to, um, well to put it lightly you know dick you around. Uh, they'll pay for some things, but they won't pay for others. You know it. They will we'll pay for the chemo, but we won't pay for any of the, the car, sorry. Uh, the, we'll pay for the chemo, but we won't pay for the actual um, equipment, you know, um, that is uh, used or any of the IVs or they'll, they'll pay for the, you know, the, I, the, you know, they'll tell you that, but the, you know, they, they absolutely will not pay for one part of it and then, then they'll cover another part of it. All right, windshield wipers are going on here. I gotta clean off the window. So, yeah, it's, uh, it's kind of uh, raining here a little bit. I know it's uh, we're in some really good fog right now. That's why that your your video is in 4K Ultra. But it looks like I'm stuck in a damn fog. Coming down the mountain right now. From the car coming up up here, or at least there was. I don't know, maybe he turned off someplace. Hopefully, he didn't crash through the guardrail on, on my left. End up down in the down in the damn gorge someplace. Sorry about it. I have to turn, I have to turn the windshield wipers on because I don't want to crash and die. I got a little one at home that I want to, I want to see again. I got a wife, daughter, friends, YouTube. Uh, you know, I got to upload this video, but I'm gonna cut it off here at 23, you know, 24 minutes somewhere in there, and I'm gonna upload this just like this to the channel today. I was hoping to actually have good video, quality video of me uh, talking while I'm driving. I'll tell you this much though, it's a darn good car. I might buy one of these. This is a Hertz rent-a-car right, uh, that I'm using right now. But it's a pretty sporty little thing. I wonder what these, what these things go for. All right. Keep it real, everybody. Stay safe out there. Until next time.